Are you ready? Are we live? <laughs> Alright, we gotta have some B-roll in here, you know, right? Just just so you know, all this I'm gonna do is pointless. You just need these, you tie it on, you're good to go. But for those that are feeling nostalgic and still want to fly fish, that's what this is. So, alright, there you go. Had to give you some glamour in the beginning before we get going. You know what I'm saying? Senyo here, Schultz Outfitters. Um, today's episode, we're going to be focusing on uh, egg flies. Everything you need to know from uh, nuke eggs to scrambled eggs to the ripple ice to Estaz eggs. I'm going to show you how to add some weight, have some little heavy hitters, maybe be a little different than everybody else. But yet, they're all simple one to two material type flies to tie. It's that time of the year to start filling your boxes if you haven't already. So stay tuned and uh, we hope you enjoy. All right, so we're gonna tie some scrambled eggs. So what you wanna do is grab whatever color flavors of egg yarn that you like, as you can see here. You know, can't go wrong with some chartreuse. Gonna have some cream delight, some orange, and some white. I'm, I, this little color range right here is perfect. Pretty much gives me everything I need to know. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this white out. What you wanna do is cut yourself off because you're gonna be doing some prep work. Just cut yourself like three to four inches off each color. So what you wanna do is after you got these cut, right? Depending on what color combinations you wanna do, you just wanna take a little bit of each color. Split it off. You can see that right there. Just split a little bit off. You don't, you don't need a ton of this stuff. You know, almost same kind of prep you would do for uh, making a little clown egg. So I'm gonna use three colors on this one, right? So you see? So I took a little bit of that cream, a little bit of that orange and white, and I'm pushing it together here. So for the scrambled eggs that I like to tie, it's all about the blend. So what I like to do is push them together and pull. Pull. Just to get that stuff to blend. Nice and neat. So you'll see you've got like an opaque orange blend, right? Now let's do one more. Let's do a little bit of chartreuse. So let's just pull a little bit off, right? You don't want too much. Our truth is kind of overpowering. So throw some white in there with that, and let's throw some cream in there with that. So there you go. All right, so see, now you got two blends, right? So that there will actually tie probably a half a dozen flies. So here I'm using, uh, if I'm on the alley, I go a little smaller. We'll use like a 1120 size 10. Or you can, if you're up here in Michigan, go to a size eight, just a little heavier hook. Got a lot more CFS up here, give you a little extra beef on your hook. You know, I kind of prep myself when I'm doing eggs, kind of have all my colors together, what I'm gonna do. So that way I don't have to do it all later. Even add some red in there, just in case I'm doing some sucker spawn or something else. So and since we're doing, doing the orange first, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my orange thread because I like that nice under base, that bright underbody. And then when you're tying an egg, you want to make sure you coat the entire tying area. Because if not, what's going to happen is the egg is going to move around on the hook. So take your time, put a nice little thread base down. So now we're going to take our orange, right? So like I said, we got this pile, right? So it's a feel. I'm going to pull a section out. Like I never want these to be too thick. You know, it just depends on the conditions. If the water's really low, you'll go sparser. If the, if the, if the water's high, you can, you can make a fuller egg. And that's, that's just a, a preference and how you want to do it. So then I'm just going to spin it. Just kind of get it all together, kind of build a rope. I'm going to cut off one end here. I'm going to tie this right into the back. And I go ahead and I seat it down nice. So now I'm just going to give myself a little room and what you want to do is just make a loop as you can see. Now how big is that loop? You know I like to, to make these about the size of a pea or just under. I'll make that loop and I'll tie it down you know six to eight wraps and I'll do it again. About the same size. And I'll do it one more time. Usually like three loops is where I try to end. 
Now I just put a nice little thread head on the front and I'm going to cut the excess off. Just finish that off strong. So when I get this here, so you'll notice you got that nice bright underbelly, right? So, and you'll notice your loops right now are still kind of tight. See that? So what you'll do is you just come in here with your fingers when you're done, you know, prune these out. Just spread them out so that water can seep into there. And you get that nice little, if you look at it, it's like a skein sack, right? It looks like a little egg cluster. You see this wet, you'll see how realistic it looks. And it's just a simple tie. Then you can whip finish or half hitch, whatever you want. Eggs, I don't spend a lot of time. I don't glue them. I just half hitch them real quick. I burn through them so fast. So there's your first variation of what uh, a scrambled eggs would look like. And the cool thing is too, is uh, there's multiple variations of this. So, I mean, there's one version that's called like a, a blood dot. If you want to add that little blood dot, you just take a marker, come in here. You can add it. You can also add it with yarn. I like to just use a marker. It makes it easier so you get that nice little red dot in there. And that's just one color. We're going to do this again. We're going to do, like I said, the chartreuse color. But you'll see how simple this was. Uh, that, that blend turns into this. Are perfect so there you go so you get a nice little egg variations for the scrambled eggs that's just two of what I used well the next egg fly that we're going to do is a nuke egg so you can I like you can veil or unveil I'll kind of show bowls so that way you can see it that's the cool thing about this is you know I'm trying to show you different options and different things that you can do simply to kind of create a nice egg box so for this, you're gonna use one or two different colors of glow bug yarn and then this great stuff called McFly foam. Okay, so if I was to choose four colors, like here's four easy colors, clown it out, you know, that would pretty much cover everything I need for steelhead, especially here in the Great Lakes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this pink for right now. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to grab. This stuff's really cool. So if you struggle tying with egg yarn, if you're a, if you're a flat tire and you don't like tying eggs, and you know, because egg yarn's a pain to deal with, I, I like to do clusters with the eggs. Um, anytime I'm doing a round egg or a nuke or something, I like to use McFly foam. So what I'm going to do is just cut a little piece off of that. This stuff goes a long ways and you don't have to use very much. So I'm gonna stick with the same hook and you'll notice like there's a bunch of different good egg hooks. So if you're wondering like on hooks, like what I should be doing, you know, A-Rex does a curved little nymph hook. It's basically very similar to the caddis hook that I'm using from the Daiichi. You can use the small number three swung fly hooks from OPST. I like those in Michigan because they just got a little bit more grab to them and they're a little firmer hook. Um, and these Bonito carp hooks from Fully Mill are also a perfect egg hook. So just to give you some options, like you don't have to, there's no one way to do this. And uh, if you want to go to a heavy iron, you do a Daiichi X510. Um, these, these have caught a lot of steelhead over the day. So anyways, just trying to give you something brief in between everything. So you can see that there's options. It's not just a one way kind of deal. Um, but I am a fan of any of these curved caddis short shank hooks for all my eggs. So nuke egg. So we're going to go with a pink egg with a, uh, a white veil just to start out. So we got our little piece. What we're going to do is just go on. Now, I'm not going to use the whole hook here. So when you're wrapping, you notice like on when I was doing another pattern, the scrambled eggs, that I would coat the entire top of the curve. I don't need to quite go that far this time because we're literally going to make a small egg with a veil. So I'm going to stop just before the hook point there. And I'm gonna lock that down. Got a good thread base so I'm not uh, spinning. Now this stuff goes a long ways. You'll notice I probably got an inch and a half, maybe two inches here. So I'm gonna cut that in half, stack it on top of each other. 
I can almost take this and cut it again. That's what I want you to see about this. So there's an inch. I'm cutting this down to a half inch. You don't need a lot on this stuff. It's stretchy. Pull it apart, set it on. And what I do is I center tie it six times and then I go lift it all up and I go around it. I'm just trying to lock that egg in place. I'll go around this three to four times and then bring it to the front. Then I'll just take my scissors, I'll pull up tight, and the size of the egg is what you want. For me, inside a nuke, I don't really want this to be more than a BB. BB size is good. Now you can make them bigger with water conditions, but this is a size that like Tommy Lynch showed me a long time ago. and. Uh, it worked really, really good for a lot of years for me. So nice little ball. See that? We can actually even make that smaller if you wanted to. That's about just a little bigger than a BB. And then I want to make a veil. So I'm going to take a little bit of my egg yarn. And I don't want to go too much. I just want to sparse. So what I did was I cut about a half inch off. I just don't want straight a straight edge so I want the veil to be uneven tapered so there and make a little V just gonna set it on I do a loose loop lock it in fold that stuff back over and what I do is just wrap right over do a little thread head see that I come back here and if it's a little I like to cut it just at the bend now you got a nice soft veil all the way around the egg there's your simple little nuke egg we're gonna make the egg a little smaller on the next one there you go. orange nuke We're going to do the uh, old school glow bug. Um, I'm going to clown this one out, so I'm sticking with the colors. But uh, when I'm doing this type of, of an egg, I'm, uh, I'm rolling a little larger size. I'm not going huge. It's not ping pong ball or anything like that, but it is uh, more steelhead green water, a um, little bit of color, sediment. Glow bugs are, are big and bushy. If I want smaller eggs, I'm going to nukes, or if I want smaller glow bugs, then I'm going to go to a McFly foam if you want a small glow bug. Um, we're going to clown. So what I'm going to do is take uh, those four colors, and you'll see it, it's thick. So what you got to do is you got to separate them. And it's easier just to throw them in front of you on the desk separate them out split them in half sometimes even more just depending on what you want to do and then once you have it as you can see here i'm taking and i'm just and i add them together so let's split this again so we got some orange we got some cream we got a little bit of chartreuse let's go with some white Let's actually split that white and put it on both sides. So there we go. Now we got a nice group. So as you can see, that little bit of material I prepped to die can make a couple different eggs. That was just using like an inch and a half of material. It's all going to be kind of front heavy, so we're going to put that coat, coat that whole hook up to the front, stop right in front of the hook. Take one of these clumps. want to do is uh, center them. What you're going to do is get that firm lock in, do about six to seven wraps, lift it all up, go around. That just depends on how 
sturdy you want it. I usually go around four times. Lock it in. Just do a quick couple half inches, lock it in. And we're gonna come in. Like I said, we wanna leave this a little bigger. Straight line cut. There we go. As you can see, you'll get the coverage. You kind of get a modeling on the eggs on a different no 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 two egg will kind of show up the same when you're doing these clowns so yeah sometimes you have a little bit more orange sometimes a little bit more pink some more chartreuse just depending on what colors you use simple and if you want to get fancy with them you can red dot them add a little marker to it Give yourself a red dot on that one. This is, like I said, just extras. You don't have to do this. This just gives it something different. Adding a little bright pink to it. So you can do pretty much whatever you want with these. Simple, easy to tie, just glow bug yarn. One material fly. We're going to do the, the Estaz egg. Uh, for me, this is one of my favorite. It's uh, super easy. It's uh, it's a green water, dirty water type steelhead fly. Um, I don't typically use this when it's low and clear, um, but you get some precipitation. You have any type of sediment in the water. Um, any any places I go that have tantic water, or darker water, this is a good fly for that too. Um, comes in a wide range of colors, but chartreuse, pinks, and orange. Um, you can't beat this stuff. Um, here we go. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of different variations on this. I'm going to show you just the Estes egg by itself, a veiled version, and then the heavy hitter. So, you know, give you some options on different levels of flies that you can have in your box. So we're going to take... Uh, some of this pink Estaz. Now you don't need a lot of this stuff. You know, I just take about two inches, cut a little piece off. Some people like to leave it on the cord and just wrap it along. I just don't like all the loose material hanging around. So I cut it off. So I'm gonna tie that on. And what I'm gonna do is I just make sure that this material is pruned out. And I'm just gonna slowly wrap in front of itself. So don't overwrap this stuff over top of itself. So you can literally just do four wraps of this and call it a day. Okay? Like I said, I'm going to show you a couple different versions on how to do this. This is just simple standard egg. That's it. Just a little bit of ass to ass wrapped on a hook. We go from that to the next level up. So we're gonna take the same thing, gonna put that thread base down, I'm gonna grab that material. Make sure you prune that material out, spin it. Like I said, I like to give it two to three, maybe four wraps, depending on the size of the egg that you want. So we're going to lock this in. And then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of that egg yarn. And just like you would do on a nuke egg, I'm going to give this thing a little veil. And this just gives uh, some material for to stick in the, stick in the teeth. And it just kind of mutes that flash down a little bit. Finish that head off. A couple whip finishes. And then this, I don't like to prune this stuff out. All I do is I just give a little rip. I don't want that straight edge. I want more of a wispy 
kind of look to it. So there's doing it, like I said, just, just as the egg. This is like kind of a milking egg or a veiled egg, okay? And then the last part that you can do with this, so you can add different dimensions in, the, in your fly boxes, is we're gonna go ahead and put the hook in. We're gonna take some of these little micro intruder eyes from uh, Aqua. It just, you know, waters up a little bit and you need a little extra to get down. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna come in here, put that thread base down. You know, since we're doing some bells and whistles on this one, right? So I'm gonna lock that down there. Got a good thread base. I'm gonna add a little bit of, like I said, you know, we want a heavy hitter. It needs to get a little deeper, right? Water's up. Wanna I'm going to add some uh, tail flash material. Fold that over. There we go. I'm going to trim it. All right, now that we have that tail flash in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that intruder eye. I'm going to tie it right on the top. And it's going to want to spin on you. It's all right, just lock it in, get around it. There you go. And then make sure you circle around it to lock it in. You see you got your eye there. Take a little piece of our Estaz. And all I'm doing is pruning that material out so I don't have to do it so hard later. I'll lock this in. And then what I'm going to do is just do a quick little figure eight around. Lock that in. So I'm going to do is pull it up tight. Cut off the excess. I'm going to make sure that stuff's out of the way. So we can add a little bit of our veil. The nice thing is too is I can use some of that scrap from any other egg flies I was tying if I was using egg yarn. Take our veil material, which is just egg yarn. We'll wrap that on. Spread it around, lock it in. Give that a few whip or uh, half hitches to lock it down. And then I just prune this. If you get a little long piece like I did there, then I would do the cut. But you want to try to have those uneven edges. So there we go. A little heavy weight, dirty water, deep dive in little egg. So the next egg I'm going to tie is uh, called the, the Ripple Ice Egg. This is a variation of like a nuke between a glow bug, a nuke, an Estaz egg. It's just a fast combination. I think the fish like seeing all the, uh, the different dynamics come together. Um, this is a fly that uh, Matt Sapinski showed me and it worked really, really well um, when I couldn't just get all the kind of standard eggs working. What we're going to do is put a good thread base down and we're going to keep everything forward in front of that, uh, in front of the point. So I'm going to take some pearl or whatever color Estaz you want, but pearl seemed to be, be the best finisher for me. So we're just going to, it's just a simple couple turns. I know like Matt used a lot of Charisse and those colors for me I found this pearl with a little bit of orange with a colored veil was uh, was really good so we add our Estaz we're gonna take and cut off 
about a half inch of McFly foam. I'm gonna stretch that out. I'll lock that in. Now you wanna make sure you don't get your uh, Estaz. Wanna come in tight with your scissors. And what I'm gonna do is just come in real tight. Cut off and make your little egg. Push that around and then I'm gonna take some of the veil. And what I'm using is, uh, this is egg yarn. Just blended, it's a little bit of chartreuse, a little bit of cream. I'm just getting it all going the same direction here. Getting any long pieces out. So like I said, it's very similar to like what we do with a nuke egg, but just a little bit more of a dynamic twist to it. A little difference, sometimes that's what it takes to catch a steelhead is something just a little different than what everybody else is doing. Finish that off. Trim, and then I'm going to come right to the edge of that estaz and I'm going to cut that veil. Just spreading it out. This is that little ripple ice, ripple crush egg from that Matt Sapinski tied. Next fly we're going to tie is the crystal meth. It's a real popular fly in Erie. It's super easy. Main full colors that you got to have. Clown it out. And you also got to have some pearl. Crelex for the, for the tail. Take some of this diamond, diamond braid. Take two pieces, about two inches long, set them on. I make sure I cover up everything really good because really the only color this fly has when you're using the pearl is going to be the base. What you're going to do is make a small loop, and then we're going to gradually build those loops as we go. So each loop is slightly bigger than the next one. Trim off the excess. A couple oh, half inches. There's your tail. So there's the pearl version. You can see the pink. Kind of gives it the color pop, so. Crystal meth. Senyo here, Schultz Outfitters, and we're just gonna tie a bead on a string and add a hook to it and catch steel light. That's how easy this is.